In this video, I'll be doing the player ratings for All-Stars 0-0 draw against Manchester City. Um, you know, very, very boring game, I won't lie. Some positives, some negatives. Um, obviously, did the live match review, so check that out. But listen, not really too much to talk about. But I'll get into the player ratings, it's a decent point. Um, starting off with David Raya in goal. Um, David Raya, it was a little bit of an interesting one, actually. I'll give him a 7 out of 10, but I was going to give him more. I thought his kicking at times was a little bit odd. Um, you know, slipped over a few times here and there and give it right to the Man City player so his kicking was a little bit dodgy couple of good ones but mostly poor in my opinion and um, other than that though thought he was okay good cross claiming did very well on that and uh, you know he didn't really have too much to do uh, shot stopping wise but yeah did his job pretty well just apart from the kicking and um, the reason I'm, I'll give him a 7 is because he did keep a clean sheet he's not got the most clean sheets in the league as you know I'm pretty sure and um, you know clean sheet at the end he had you know when was the last time that happened not happened in a few years so listen brilliant brilliant from David Raya kicking was off but other than that thought it was was pretty good so i will give him a 7 out of 10 and um, on to ben white ben white i'm going to i'm going to give ben white a 9 out of 10 i think i thought ben white was very very good to be honest thought it was absolutely fantastic and um, obviously defensively did very well whether well, it was jack Grealish during that side uh, bernardo came there Foden came there here docu was there at times as well there's loads of different players there and whoever it was he locked him up very well and first half going forward i thought it was very very good i have to say and um, you know crossing it in in the first 20 to 30 minutes when we were struggling, he was our only real guy who was producing little bits of quality. Good crosses to the likes of Havertz, uh, you know, to Jesus as well. And I thought Ben White, you know, was a very good outlet. Going forward, doing very well. His passing was crisp and his crossing was good. And defensively did a very good job. So Ben White, going to give him a 9 out of 10. Not sure if that's a little bit generous. Maybe you could put that down to an 8. But I thought he was, you know, one of the man of, ma man of the match contenders. So it was absolutely brilliant. So I'm personally going to give him a 9 out of 10. William Saliba, uh, moving on to him. You know, he got the Sky Sports man of the match. I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10 but me personally I don't think I'm going to give him my man of the match not sure if that's a little bit harsh because listen he was brilliant I'm giving him a 9 out of 10 so it was very very good and if you want to give him it I've literally no problem with that because he was brilliant in fact you can see some of his uh, stats here uh, he had the most touches in the game most he won possession the most times most duels won most clearances most uh, possession won in the middle third three tackles committed no fouls and wasn't dribbled wasn't dribbled past once so listen Saliba was absolutely brilliant him and Gabriel are keeping uh, Erling Haaland so quiet. They've done that three games in a row now. Uh, Community Shield at the 1-0 one, uh, one win at the Emirates and now at the Etihad. So listen, very, very good yet again. Passing was okay. Everything else was fine. But in this game, the majority of things that we were keeping an eye on is defending. And listen, he was absolutely brilliant. Keeping a you know, guy of uh, Erling Haaland's um, you know, level quite quiet. Very good. Yes, I know he's not obviously the best of you know overall play. But you know, out of nowhere, he can get a goal and did keep him out for 19 minutes in this whole season. Absolutely brilliant from William Saliba and obviously his partner who I'll get on to. But Saliba, 9 out of 10. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, yeah, I thought it was very, very good. And um, moving on to Gabriel. I'm actually going to give him my man of the match. Another 9 out of 10. Um, you can really give it to anybody off on the back four, to be honest. I thought they were all great. I'm going to give it to Gabriel just because I thought it was just a little bit better. Just a little bit because, you know, I thought he was winning. You know, he had uh, more battles against Haaland, I thought. I thought he was the one who Haaland kept going to. And Gabriel kept doing a very good job on it. Uh, job on him and um, obviously you know bullying him at times really to be honest pushing him on the ground making sure he's there but he's still such a refreshing thing to see a strong physical defender who doesn't mind giving it a bit of sum and um, you know back in the old days you'd see we're not back in the old days but you know when we're finishing you know not in a title race eighth place in that we'd have these weak defenders who you know just couldn't really do anything but now we have the likes of Saliba and now Gabriel thought it was brilliant winning all the aerial duels uh, bullying Haaland at times as well didn't give him a sniff at all and his passing was okay and I'm going to give him my personal man of the match but listen you can either you can give it to either one of those two thought they were absolutely brilliant to both of them and the Gabriel Magalhães Saliba what a partnership keep going over this you know those two together arguably you know they could go down as our you know I don't know if they're best ever but at least certainly up there if we win major honours with them because those two they complement each other so well and I thought they did absolutely brilliant keeping Erling Haaland out and defensively keep a clean sheet at the Etihad listen absolutely phenomenal I think that's the first time in like three years as well so listen 
very very good and uh you know it's it's brilliant you know the two what they can do you know what they they've done together the way they complement each other brilliant so gabriel magalhães is going to give him a nine out of ten he's my personal man of the match and um, moving on to jacob kibior kibior i'm going to it's a difficult one i'm going to give him an eight out of ten i think i'm not sure if that's maybe a little bit harsh you could maybe put him down to a seven because i thought he started off the game pretty poor and um, giving the ball away a few times jesus had to foul bernardo silva because they obviously went past him uh you know a couple of uh, little passes over here but defensively thought he was fine likes afford him bernardo you know apart from the maybe the first you know half an hour something like that thought kiwi was fine locked up that defense and it's part of the defense that kept the clean sheet at the etihad so i will give him an eight out of ten you could maybe drop that down, uh, drop that down to a seven i would understand but i'm personally going to give him an eight and again i think he keeps his place he's been absolutely brilliant for us not as good this game but still eight out of ten you could put that to a seven as i keep saying but listen it's a clean sheet at the etihad that's why i'm giving lots of these defenders you know high ratings and probably the attack don't get uh, don't get as many but yeah uh, kibio did his job to uh, you know not a great start but i thought he settled into the game pretty well and i'm going to give him an eight out of ten Jorginho, obviously uh, him in midfield thought he was i uh, thought it was okay to be honest gonna give him it's a difficult one i'll give him a seven out of ten i think thought it was okay you know got stuck in there even every now and again thought it was fine it uh, did a decent job i thought a couple of times did get overrun you could see there and obviously got a little bit tired so he had to come off but thought he did an okay job thought he uh, protected the back four pretty well wasn't as uh, influential as uh, you know the one nil win at the emirates and maybe against liverpool but still did a job and that uh, you can see he's pretty reliable his experience comes in handy you know he's very intelligent with his, with his body obviously managing to win fouls helping the likes of Declan Rice next to him as well so Jorginho thought he was okay 7 out of 10 for me and um, moving on to Declan Rice Declan Rice I'm actually going to give him an 8 out of 10 you could you could probably even give him a 9 out of 10 maybe that's a little bit harsh but on the ball well maybe wasn't the greatest off it though thought he did absolutely brilliant the guy is so physically strong and such a you know such a what's it athletic person as well you know doesn't really doesn't really get muscled off the ball doesn't really you know he's a little burst of pace that comes in handy all the time too and is so very so you know good with that when you think he's gonna lose it he just stretch it out stretches uh, his foot out always gets the ball you know barely do, you know does anything wrong and listen we needed if we we're gonna get anything we needed him to have obviously a pretty good game and i thought he did i thought he had a very good game eight out of ten for me on it maybe not the best you know that's not you know he's never been on uh, on the ball the best to be honest but off it thought it was absolutely brilliant and thought he did everything right winning the ball you know physically you do putting in good blocks as well because we needed that and whenever they wanted to have a shot from outside the box the main guy that was there was obviously Declan Rice so I thought Declan Rice was brilliant and I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10 uh, moving on to Martin Odegaard Odegaard to be honest was a bit of a mixed performance thought obviously he does the usual stuff leading the press doing all that very very well you know uh, being a very good leader on the pitch a couple of decent moments on the ball played Saka in, in the second half so I had okay thought some passes though were very very sloppy like a couple of times just you know very poor passes straight to the Man City player so you know I didn't think he was absolutely awful and you know he works his absolute socks off you can easily see but not the best performance either probably probably going to give him a 6 out of 10 I think didn't think Odegaard was you know I thought it was average nothing amazing some good bits but some uh, you know pretty bad bits too so 6 out of 10 for me for Martin Odegaard thought it was you know not the worst of players on the pitch but obviously could have been uh, we know he's much much better than that but yeah just 6 out of 10 for me. Bukayo Saka um, to be honest I thought it was a pretty poor performance and um, you know not really not really influential at all to be honest I mean it does his defensive work very very well we all know that you know tracking back give away a couple of silly fouls but listen yeah puts a puts a very good shift in obviously winning tackles doing good at uh, good doing good and that leaving uh, doing well in the press too but that's all the basics and um, overall not really again on the ball not really influential um second half made a good run in behind for martin odegaard's pass played it across goal maybe could have got an assist unlucky there did very well there other than that though didn't really you know barely noticed him and that uh, yeah it wasn't a great performance probably give him a five out of ten a little bit quiet from bukayo saka's high standards got involved here and there and you know when he did get the ball didn't get it much to be fair and you know that's not really a photos of a photos of, of his own but when he did get it looked threatening didn't really get it enough though and yeah didn't wasn't really involved in the game and yeah just going to give him a five out of ten for uh, bukayo saka gabriel jesus jesus was a very interesting performance because 
I'm thinking between a six or a seven because, um, you know, yes, he did waste a few opportunities. Like when White crossed it, a little shot went wide. Another shot on his left foot went wide. And, um, you know, there's a moment in the first half where he just, you know, should have unleashed a shot, kept doing silly fake shots. And, you know, it was, um, was disappointing there. Um, obviously, when Saka put that ball across, you could argue he should have been there. He'd made maybe the wrong run, but maybe that's hindsight. I don't know. And, yeah, so he had a few opportunities to maybe do a little bit better. But, listen, getting into those opportunities, being our main threat in that first half, that's obviously a big thing. And does this, you know, helps out defensively as well. So, I'm thinking six or seven. I'm going to give him a seven. But, listen, if you don't agree with that, I do get it. Because he did waste a few opportunities. So, maybe you have to put that down to a six. But, just because he was always a threat. Always, you know, helping out the team as well. I'll give him a seven. Not a great performance, but, you know, was very, very useful. And out of all the attackers, probably the most threatening as well. So, we'll give him a seven out of ten for Jesus. And, um, obviously, Kai Havertz up front. Havertz, I'm going to give him a six out of ten, to be honest. Not great. Was always was more involved than Saka. You know, uh, helped us every now and again. When we did decide to go long, uh, you know, helped us uh, try win a few fouls. And, obviously, get, being a little bit of an outlet. Uh, you know, uh, holding up the defenders. You'd be winning that physical battle at times. Sometimes he did lose it though And yeah, didn't really get too many opportunities or anything like that Don't think it was really a game for that It was just mainly an outlet And was a little, you know, did okay Works hard, we all know And uh, yeah, just not really involved as much as, you know, the previous games But yeah, 6 out of 10 for Kai Havertz Didn't really get involved too much, of course And uh, on to the subs Let me see here, the first two that came on Thomas Partey and Takahiro Tomiyasu Partey Party, I'm gonna give him a 6 out of 10. Not sure if he was perhaps a bit harsh or generous actually, because a few sloppy touches, tried to have a shot that, you know, just absolutely messed it up. And yeah, so didn't do well there. Couple of little passes in between the lanes, which obviously, when Trossard had that chance to obviously try to square it, that came from Thomas Party's brilliant pass, so good pass there. Couple of sloppy moments as well, maybe lost Harlan for the corner, so good bits, some bad bits, 6 out of 10 for me. So getting back to full fitness, he's gonna be important. And Tomiyasu, Tomiyasu, Give him an eight out of ten. Well, not eight, seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. That was a good performance when he did come on for Kibo left back. Obviously, you know, yeah, did very well against Doku and you know did, did his job really. You know, didn't really let him pass him. And yeah, he's coming back as well. Those two are going to be very important for rotation wise as well and options off the bench. So you know, those two were the first two subs. Uh, On to the other sub, Leandro Trossard. Trossard. I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. You know, a couple of nice little skill moves did, you know, contribute very, very nicely when he did come on. The one bit, though, when he did obviously get in behind, you know, what, what I don't know what he was thinking. Is he thinking, I want to go greedy? Is he not fast enough? Does he not believe in his ability to play that ball? Because he really should be squaring that to Martinelli. Doesn't manage to pull it off, though. And maybe if he does that, we're talking about a big win here. But yeah, it is what it is. He didn't do it. But yeah, overall, good outlet. Did okay. But that's a big moment he didn't really do well in. So 6 out of 10 for uh, Leandro Trossard. Martinelli thought he would come on a little bit earlier. Came on with about 10 minutes left. Did okay. Ran around a bit. Didn't have really much too much time to do anything. If he had started the game, you know, I think we would be talking about maybe a better result here. Because, listen, he's um, our main outlet. Guy pace in behind. No walker as well for City. So he could have been useful. But it is what it is. Didn't start. Came on, came on, sorry. Didn't really do too much. Only got 10 minutes. But yeah, 6 out of 10 for Gabriel Martinelli. On to the manager, Mikel Arteta. Arteta, I'm going to give Arteta. It's an interesting one. I'll give him a 7 out of 10, I think. I think he did well. Obviously, you know, you can see the XG actually not much at all. Man City 0.85, Arsenal 0.73, nil nil great game, boring game. People saying, was that his plan? It looked like it. We're more pragmatic than usual. And you can see the XG there pretty much proving it. We didn't, you know, defend it very well. Um, obviously, didn't create too much either, though. And yeah, but you can see here how good we are defensively as well. Erling Haaland has accumulated 0.2 X, uh, 0.24 XG against Arsenal. Arsenal in the last three appearances against them absolutely brilliant obviously got to do with Sleeper and Gabriel but you have to give credit to the whole defensive structure that's around them too the protection in front of them the goalkeeper behind them hey he's done very very well with that I give credit to Arteta and again big stat here Man City's 57 game goal streak at the Etihad comes to an end against Arsenal today I mean that's incredible for Mikel Arteta we saw how he nullified them at the Emirates uh, you know keeping them to four shots then a little bit more but you know how many clear-cut chances 
chances did, did, they, did they really have on David Raya? Very, very little in my opinion, apart from the Nathan Aki one. Uh, and listen, they've not uh, conceded, uh, they've not, not scored, sorry, at home in, what, three years? Absolutely brilliant for Mikel Arteta to end that. And you can see he's done a very, very good job in that game. Yes, attacking-wise in the game, we could have done probably more. And maybe, you know, could he have stopped Martin Martinelli earlier? I thought the subs were okay, though. And he's using a squad pretty well. Um, and the starting 11, I was pretty happy with it, too. And, you know, Gabriel was fit, Saka was fit. And you can see, well, mainly Gabriel was more important than Saka. But, yeah, he did a good job. Uh, to set us up defensively very well. Yes, did you know, have to suffer at times and couldn't get out. But, listen, that's Man City. They're going to do that to you at the Etihad. And the nil-nil draw is not bad whatsoever, uh, you know, at the Etihad. You know, when they, you know, win most games, to be honest. I don't think they've lost their this season. They're the reigning champions. And to, you know, to go there, keep it nil-nil uh, and get a point is very, very good. And Mikel Arteta gets a 7 out of 10 for me for that. Unlucky we didn't win is what it is. And, yeah, so let's hope we can, you know, do better in the upcoming games. But, listen, the draw at the Etihad isn't bad. And I'll give Arteta a 7 out of 10 for that. But, yeah, um, I've really touched on anybody. So that's obviously the really it. Uh, I was just to sum it up, really, I'll bring in the league table here. You can see Liverpool, unfortunately, now top of the league with 67 points and um, we are obviously second on 65 man city on 64 so listen what three point difference between first and third so so tight and um, man city obviously in a little bit of a struggling position the worst goal difference and these points out of the three of us we obviously have the best goal difference too so listen it's not all over whatsoever if they draw a game we win a game bam just like that we're back on top so it's so so tight and uh, yeah but listen we've got some titles on our hands here haven't we from a neutral point of view from an Arsenal fan we've been dreaming of getting into these positions and we're finally now back there I mean you know we need to rely on Liverpool to drop points I'm confident we they will but you know because they can't you know if they win 10 in a row then fair enough but listen we might drop points too so I have to wait and see but yeah the draw isn't the worst a win would have been ideal but listen a draw isn't bad that yet he had and that's where we are at the league table and we must move on to Luton on Wednesday night obviously but yeah that's really it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching uh, let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below do you think I've been a bit harsh with some ratings a bit generous with some as well who was your man of the match very interested in all that and watch out for the Luton preview that'll be out probably maybe Monday Tuesday something like that so watch out for that uh, you know what so yeah watch out for that and you know quick 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 turn around actually because obviously you know we can't even have a week's rest three days later against Luton will he rotate will be interesting to see but yeah have to wait and see what we do but watch out for the content around that uh, yeah make sure you check out the other video as well to the live stream around the game where I talked about the game in more detail as well so check that video out if you haven't already seen it but as for this one leave a like on it if you've enjoyed it subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one